Hello, everybody, and welcome to another OnCon. This is going to be a little bit more of an unusual one. I had scheduled some people I knew from up in New York, and uh, unfortunately, something came up uh, with two of them, and with everything that's going on in New York, I fully understand. And uh, another person, ironically, had something else come up. Just because we're all in lockdown doesn't always mean that everyone is not doing anything. So you're going to get stuck with me today right now, it seems, to talk about movies. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to talk about movies and their comic book counterparts. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, feel free to throw around the questions I am trying to actually answer right now. Excuse me. A message just to make sure that uh, I don't think it's anything I need right now, to be honest with you. Nope. doesn't look like anything. Um, if anyone wants to come on there, you're welcome to come on. So it's just not a me thing today. Uh, I'm going to throw out oops, the comments for you guys to join me. So, all right, um, let's talk about the, 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 uh, the realistic, honest truth about most comic book adaptations early on, at least until this new millennium. Most of them just did not have the CGI required to pull them off properly. A lot of love to Blade. I think Blade did a great job. Uh, converting itself, although a lot of the story didn't really take. It was just the character was very well done by Wesley Snipes. And then we're going to have to give a lot of credit to, I think, early on the Superman. Actually, the earlier Supermans, I think, uh, I think they really did, really did a good job with it. I got to admit, like whenever you think of Superman, I can't think of a better one than the original 1980s uh, uh, Christopher Reeves Superman. I mean, and of course, with uh, of course Gene Hackman walking out on it and them having to piece together the rest of it, I think is pretty cool. And I think it's pretty awesome that they were still able to do it. And just like today, I do want to give just a programming note. You guys who are doing panels, I want you to understand this happens in real life. I've been invited to panels. And something happened and everyone else wasn't able to attend. And I wound up running the panel all by myself, which was awkward. So I'm kind of used to it by now. I'm used to audiences not showing up and I'm used to things going wrong. And you got to kind of be adaptive with all that stuff. And that's what I am today, adaptive for you guys. It probably won't be the best panel we've ever done, but we're going to do it because we committed to bringing you guys a panel once a day. So that's what we're doing right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and share it on there. But yeah, you got to roll with the punches and be ready to go. Um, you talk about the 90s and comic book movies. There really was an opportunity, honestly, with Spawn. But for those who know... Uh, the story behind it, their budget kept getting slashed, ironically, like the first Deadpool movie. And it wound up being decent for what, if you know the story behind it. And even at the time, it was pretty decent. There were some horrible scenes, like the, uh, I'll be honest with you, the scenes with them in hell were absolutely horrible, in my opinion. I'm just putting a, a link out in case anyone wants to hang out with us right now and then we'll start talking about some stuff and start taking some uh some questions all right so here we go first let's get down to the 90s also having some bad stuff the Hulks did not do well in the 90s in the new millennium with all spider-man struggled a lot there was some good and bad with spider-man can't ignore Batman, which was 89 to 90. Um, Batman did really well, I think, originally, all until, and I, I'm not a big, uh, what's his name, Tim Burton fan in general, but he actually did rather well with Batman. I gotta give him credit. I actually like the adaptation of it. I think he did well. I'll give him credit where credit's due. And 
I'm pretty excited about that. So I am trying to remember if there was any other standout. Of course, we had Fantastic Four, which, again, at the time it looked good. Later on, it doesn't age as well. So I'm not too sure how that held up. And then, of course, Batman just went to hell in the 90s and early millennium. And then, of I mean, the late millennium back then, we, we go into the new millennium, and all of a sudden we have Marvel really stepping up, suddenly coming out of nowhere. Even their later uh, Hulk movie, while still with Ed Norton, while still not exactly uh, a masterpiece, was a lot better put together, but still had some weird problems. They still hadn't worked out the mechanics of the Hulk just yet. So we get, we go ahead and we uh, get the uh, MCU starting. And a lot of that, it's been adapted from comic books and put into what you guys are seeing right now as comic book movies. And they've almost become the new standard of what is going on. So that's pretty exciting to, well, I, I guess that after the, the, the Marvel thing, you had some of the DC stuff starting to pop up. And I always say the adaptation of, DC has always been better. And I think their comic books have always translated better for animation with DC for some reason. I'm not a huge fan of Wonder Woman. I never will be. And I'm still not going to be a, a fan of it as far as for story. I give the actress credit. Uh, they put out an entertaining flick, so I'll watch it. it you know, it's nothing horrible. Uh, I, I'm not the type of fan who won't support it. I just won't go see it again sometimes. You know, I actually like the Wonder Woman story, though, that they did come up with. And, of course, this comes back to the connection to the original character and them losing a lot of originally what the character is. So, And I know it sounds snobbish, but that's my, how I am as a fan. And, you know, you can either support it or not. It's up to you uh, what you do with your fandom. And it's okay, I think. I don't think we, we admit this out loud too often. It's okay to not like something. I wouldn't stop being uh, friends with someone because they didn't like something. And I think when we go to Star Wars, we get that a lot. Actually, um, well, that's an interesting thing, too. Because I remember when I did uh, The Last Jedi Review. Here, I'll, I'll even play it for you. Hey, guys, it's me. Mr. Anderson, um, I'm the Sinsful Comics YouTube channel for uh, the first time. The uh, the idea behind it is that I'm a, uh, a contributor and a head writer on a lot of the Sinsful Comics so content. I think that the Star Wars can take my criticism. Uh, I don't think I'm going to hurt the brand by what I'm going to say, but I do have some serious concerns about the film. With that said, know that I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan, and I can tell you that is it is at least worth watching on the big screen. I do think it's worth the price of admission right away. But with that said, I'm going to use my usual format, and but I'm going to do it in a spoiled way. So this is your last warning. If you don't want this spoiled for you, do not watch this film. Uh, now, this is basically I'm going to use our usual format, but... This is not, I'm not going to give the credits page because it's too long. Uh, this is what we use for comic books, the ongoing series and all that. And the first impression of the title, obviously, I've known Star Wars since I was a kid. The Last Jedi kind of made me feel like they were going to stop having Jedis and move towards that uh, mutual power, which is mentioned a lot. We'll have to see how that goes. But so far, it is misleading as it is not The Last Jedi. Those who watch the movie realize this by the end. There is, I guess, technically it's still The Last Jedi because Ray becomes The Last Jedi. We'll have to see. Because I guess by the beginning of the film, it's, she's actually not the last, it looks no longer The Last Jedi because she's become a Jedi. And technically with them actually still coming back as ghosts, so Jedi is ever fully gone. It's an interesting thing to debate. Uh, how did the story flow? This one flowed decent. Um, I don't think that there was a flow problem as much as there were plot problems. The uh, thoughts on the art, which is the cinematography and the CGI, is fantastic. Got to give them credit. It looked like a beautiful film. It was very well filmed. Uh, I'm very happy with having seen it, and I'm going to go see it again. So that tells you, even with the problems I have, I think it's worth watching again. 
Uh, what was the best part of the movie in this case to me? The best part of the movie had to be the fact that there was um, the continuation of a story. I got to see some characters I love. I got to see some really funny moments. Um, I mean, it, it was not by any way, shape, or form a dumpster fire. Uh, it is not the best in the collection to me. Um, it definitely had its problems. Uh, one of those being Spacewalk with Leia. And as you guys know, this in the video, I'm showing some art that we were given to celebrate this from various artists. And you should check it out on writtensins.com under Star Wars fan art in our, search, in our little search area here. But I mean, um, it, it was, you know, getting to see the characters, getting to see character development, it, it, was, it was interesting in that regard. Uh, I was definitely entertained. Uh, were the character, characters relatable and interesting? Yes, they were. Uh, I don't know how relatable some of them are, but they were definitely interesting. What was the best part of the movie to me? Seeing the characters come back to life, getting to revisit my childhood in a movie. Uh, did it leave me wanting a next continued issue? Yes, I'll be honest. I want to see what happens next. And do I recommend this to movie to others and uh, final thoughts. Okay, do I recommend it? I started this video saying that I recommended it, but I wouldn't call it Anderson approved. This is something that will not be, to me, considered Anderson approved. The reason I don't consider it Anderson approved is I had some real fundamental issues. The fact that they, uh, they add a casino job in the middle of it, it suddenly becomes Star Trek Oceans 3. Um, it, 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 it felt like the writer went and read every spoiler, every internet uh, theory, and went out of their way to make it nonsense. Oh, goodness. Did I not have a uh, speaking pace that I liked? That was back when I was trying to slow myself down because everyone complained I talked too quickly. I think I found a much better narrative voice now. But as you guys can see, you know, you, when you're talking about it, you try to tread lightly. You don't want to really offend anyone with what you're, what you're talking about. And you want to be open to these new adaptations. But sometimes just certain books get it really, really wrong. We had talked about this last week with the media, and I could barely get a word in with the different creators I had had on last week. It just, you know, sometimes you don't get the people to show up that you want to show up. So if you guys have any uh, particular movies that you want to, me to talk about i'll i'll jump in but I'll, i will talk about and we will take a look at the new batman that was really something that we didn't really get to talk about and I want, i'm going to give a little bit of critique on the new batman so we're going to look up the new batman and we're going to talk about some of what we see going on here we go all right so Actually, let's go here. Let's go to all. Let's just put in Batman. Because I believe the title is going to be the Batman if they haven't changed it. All right. So we even have a, apparently a new look over, up to it. Um, about Brian K. Morrison. It's, Brian, it's not that you talk too quickly. It's that you talk too much. No, I'm kidding. Brian, if you want to come in and talk about fandom, all my guests kind of had things come up. So I'm kind of doing this solo. You're free to come on in and, and talk about your uh, your fast talking and uh, tell me what you think. But looks like we're also getting a Robin here. Um, this uh, Timothy Chamelot transforms into Robin. Oh, I think this was something different. Wasn't this he transformed for uh Oh no, that that is I was gonna say whoops. Ugh, don't you hate that something comes up like that? I hate when things like that happen. So they're also talking about making Bruce uh more campy again. Which would be interesting to see them do because I do think that it works better a little time. Um, a lot of times when they do that. And here's the new look of the Wonder Woman, which I like colorful stuff. But this might just be a little ridiculous, even for me, with the colors. I do like the shiny, though. I love the shininess that's going on over there. So that's pretty cool how shiny her outfit is. 
All right. We don't want a copyright strike, so we're, we're not going to spend a lot of time on any one particular image because we don't want anyone getting upset that we showed images. But I am pretty excited about the new look of the Batman, and I, I want to see. I actually like Batman. I um, I mean, the uh, what the Robert Patterson is the Batman. I'm kind of excited what he does for it. And let's see what Esquire had to say. Oh, no, we don't want to play that video. Oh, Frank. Oh, Frank. Hey, what's going on, Frank? What's going on, Frank? Hey. I saw you were excited to jump on. It came back. Uh, stuff. Yep. Um, unfortunately, my guest, my guest had big problems today. All of them? Uh, well, I only did, I was trying to keep it down to four for this one. Cause you remember last time that we were on, it seemed like we didn't have enough time because everyone got really excited. So I try not to fill the room on certain panels. And on this one, I only brought in three people and myself. Two of them were connected to the same reason. And it's, they had to get together with another creator and do something. And then you got, that comes up, you know, you have a creative problem. You have to go. And the other person's up in New York and something came up and I'm not going to judge anything with New York right now. Because in New York, things are changing daily. So what's going on, Frank? Tell them who you are. I am Frank Martin. I'm a comic writer, comic creator. Got a book on Kickstarter right now. And I'm in New York, too. But I'm here and I'm chilling. So we're talking about fandom today. And I quickly went over the the mess that was the 80s. And uh, how... uh, Let me ask you this question. Superman. Do you think anyone's done it right since the original two? My opinion is that since the first two, Superman has not been used right in the movies. What what orig- what do you say original two? Uh, the Donner ones with uh, Christopher uh, oh, Reed from the seventies and the early eighties, and I even like the one that Richard uh, Pryor was in. To be honest with you, you know, you know what? I'm not really the best judge of this because I'm not a huge Superman guy. So when people say this is not Superman, that's an adaptation on the screen, I'm like. I don't know. He's flying. He's got a cape and an S on his chest. So I don't really know what you mean when you say that's not Superman. I could certainly talk about Batman or well, Spider-Man. But when well, you say that's not Superman, I don't really, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a good judge on that. Okay. So who did it best on the silver screen playing Batman? I'll say for me, it was Kevin Conroy. Oh, for Batman? Yeah, that- Kevin Kevin that's Conroy was a good one. one. It works. It works for those of you at home because he did Mask of the Phantasm, which was a theatrical release. So it does <laughs> work, and I can get it in there. But I would I would do Kevin Conroy's the best Batman ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. When you when you hear Batman's voice, when you read a Batman comic, it's Kevin Conroy that's speaking. Mm-hmm. So it's it's t- it's definitely tough. Um but now that when voices become so interlinked with characters, I was talking about this with someone before, like the Spider-Man animated series in the nineties. Um, I don't know the guy's name that did the voice for it, but he was Peter Parker to me. Cause I was a kid and that was the first Spider-Man I was really connected to. And then the a video game came out, Spider-Man edge of time, which was a crossover between Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. And the voice actor that was Spider-Man in the nineties series did 2099 in the video game so it was like i'm like you're playing the wrong spider-man <laughs> wasn't he it's also been... in didn't they bring him up in spider-verse didn't he get to reprise that role maybe i don't i'm, I'm not sure i think he was uh, a background voice when you were hearing voices they had done that cool thing there's that one thing when they show the multiverse and you hear different uh different things oh, yeah huh? maybe I don't, remember, I don't, I don't remember about that. But he's he he was Spider Man to me when I heard that voice. I'm like, that dude's Peter. That's Peter Parker. That's how Peter Parker talks. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm actually looking up his name because I remember the guy you're talking about, Christopher yeah. Daniel Barnes. Was Another the- one was uh, Terry McGinnis in Batman Beyond. He had he had such a quintessential Terry voice. So I was like, when the guy talks, I'm like, that's Terry. That's how Terry talks. And here's Brian K. Morris. I, I thought you were in the bathroom at first when you first came in in the background. I even said <laughs> a question mark. I was like, did I catch you at a bad time? Uh, no, I'm just so dedicated to helping you out, Rob, that I'll I'll do this show anytime, anywhere, literally. Yeah, like, so, uh, hold on, get a flush. And then yeah. no, no toilet paper. So excuse me while I wash my hands. 
Oh. Yeah, for yeah, and to the tune of Inagata De Vida. Now I heard you guys talking about Superman. That just you know, I just happen to have a vested interest in the guy. So, well, we'll get right back to that. I want to Frank to go, 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 because I do want to talk to you about that. Because I do okay want to explore that a little bit. Okay. So let me ask you: Did you see Into the Spider Verse? I did. Did it bother you how they portrayed that Peter Parker? Because I was really bothered by the 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 kind of wet noodle Peter Parker we got for that one. Not really, because it was. I viewed it as just a Peter Parker from the Spider Verse. It wasn't the Peter Parker. It was just a Peter Parker. It's the same way that the Peter Parker that dies in the beginning of the movie is not the Peter Parker. He's just a well, wasn't Peter that Parker. Ben Parker. Yeah, no. Ben. Yeah, to go look at it's not actually Peter. That's Ben. That's in that universe. Ben is the one who is the uh, Spider Man. Okay. Either either way, it, to me, it wasn't it wasn't the Spider, and that's fine because we've got to see so many Spider Man over the years that it was the fact that they decided to do a little uh, a midlife crisis, elderly, grumpy, curmudgeon Spider Man is not really uh, wasn't really <laughs> that. <laughs> <good. Besides, laughs> he's not. He wasn't the star of the movie, so it was it wasn't his tale. So I was I was perfectly fine with that, and I love the movie because. I was a huge Miles Morales fan. I was when I the the first time I read a uh, his first appearance, I was like, "This dude is is a great character." So, the fact that he got his time on the screen so soon after he uh, first appears, I thought was pretty cool. It is pretty cool. And yes, young man, I was talking about Superman. That's why he came on, and I said this, and you can just say he's that Brian K. Morse is the super. Like I'm a Batman fan. I've got Batman tattooed on me. And uh, that's actually the symbol for Batman and Robin for me and my son. Um, so I'm huge with Batman. And But I'll say this. There's been two movies that I think did well, and they're all connected. I like um, – he's on um, – oh, I just saw his name. He he picked up the role from Christopher Reeves when they brought back the Superman story. Brandon arc. Ralph. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that whole story archive, I actually thought that was Superman. I didn't think anyone did Superman as good as those stories did, to be honest with you. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? You're a Superman fan. It, has it been cringeworthy the last couple of years watching them try to play with it? Um, to a degree, yeah. Um, I'm, I've heard that Batman v Superman is an interesting movie. If I could have seen it, like did somebody buy a Klieg light or something for a Zack Snyder? Cause that thing was so bleep and dark. There were some great moments in it, all seriousness. Uh, and Henry Cavill, I bought it. He was fantastic. And he has a superpower in that he practically carried his movies on his back uh, when Gal Gadot wasn't around. Um, but I, I had some reservations about, um, Man of Steel, I, I Superman Returns. There were some cringe-worthy uh, elements in that, uh, but even when you go back to the Christopher Reeve movies, one and two hold up pretty well. But then after that, the quality starts to uh, uh, go into a screaming power dive. Except for Christopher Reeve, I think if anything holds a lot of the Superman movies together, and this may be blasphemy in some circles, but I don't think the movies hold up as well over time when you start to really critically think about it. But the actors are awesome. The actors really have brought out different aspects of the character, uh, for me at least, and have brought um, the positive aspects of the character uh, to the fore. Uh, I just wish they had been better served by a lot of the scripts. And Frank, do you think that's true? Do you think our comic book movies nowadays, especially, are going to possibly age badly? I know we just had MCU hit a home run, but like it kind of downplayed Black Widow a lot. And there was a lot of backlash in our own time period about how they kind of hoard her out throughout the movies. Do you think that our time period that we're currently in where we're celebrating comics won't age well? Uh... I have no idea. That's a very tricky question. It's e it's easy to look through a lens of something that happened 20, 30 years ago and and judge what was going on that time. We see it all the time with politicians that are having to answer for questions that they said decades ago. So to be able to judge pop culture, uh, 
through a lens of the past. It's it's always a tricky thing. That is so true. All right, so let's talk about what is each one of your favorite adaptations right now that you were like, oh, my God, there it is. That is what I read in the comic book. They actually gave a shit about me, and they actually wrote a movie that's based on it. Like, I can't give – you can give an Oscar to the Joker you all you want. Hashtag not my Joker. And there's no way you can convince me that that movie is going to be about the Joker when we're talking about what I think the Joker is. Absolutely no way. And I like the the uh, the last, what is it, the last joke? No. Yeah. Killing joke. Killing joke. Thank you. The kill, I love that. I love the cartoon of it and all. That, that, that's not my, you didn't like the cartoon of the last Joker? Last joke? I, I, I don't like the killing joke at all. To be honest, um, I actually I like the original up to the last page, which uh, even Alan Moore said that's crappy. And I really liked the um, the anime the animated uh, show even less because of that uh, kind of creepy uh, front half where uh, Batgirl and uh, Batman kind of have it for each other. That's that just doesn't see that doesn't speak to me from the comics. I was a big uh, Killing Joke fan. Uh, I was excited, super excited for the um, for the animated movie. I even I bought tickets to see it in the movie theater, and I dragged my wife to it. And she's like, "I don't want to see this." I'm like, "You're coming." I bought two, <laughs> and so we went, and I hated it from like the first ten minutes. Brian Azzarello wrote the first half, and it was just. It didn't, he didn't really, uh, they, they gave him, what was it, like an extra hour, 45 minutes to, to really mm -hmm. add on to the story. And he didn't utilize that time well. He didn't really graft the prelude. And, and I was talking to people about it, and we came to a realization. Be like, it, there was, there was a, you could tell they're two separate movies. You needed to find a way to combine them. And I thought it would have been an unbelievable twist, an unbelievable storytelling opportunity is instead of putting uh, Commissioner Gordon as Joker's hostage in the end, have it be uh, Batgirl, have it be Barbara Gordon instead, switch it, do something completely different than what people were expecting from the graphic novel. And it would have really been a, a a great gender reversal for our time to try to see how that dynamic would play out and plus it would bring the the beginning of the movie full full circle where we actually see, it becomes it becomes Batgirl's tale at that point and I, I thought that, that. Would be cool yeah to see happen uh, I don't know if it would have hit a home run or been good or been bad or been a flop but I would have really respected the movie a hell of a lot more if they made that attempt. I agree with you, and uh, it was doubly disappointing for me because Brian Azzarello used to write the bat the detective comics, so you'd think he'd have a better handle on uh, how Batman would behave. I don't see him having it off with his assistants, uh, despite what Frederick Wortham says. But um, yeah, I I was just disappointed with that movie all around too. I went in with an open mind because I really don't like the comic, but uh, except for the art. <laughs> I think that was a little bit of them putting the cart before the horse. They said, okay, we have the opportunity to make a rated R animated Batman movie. What can we do? And then they said, and then in order to fill that void, they're like, let's have Batman bang Batgirl. <laughs> that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the rated R version right there. That's well, what uh, they, I think that wasn't the first gang. time they had that. That had been a big trope, remember, in Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond had always hinted that there was a relationship between Barbara and Bruce that had turned sour over time and they had overstepped things. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really yeah, the first time. I think, I think they handed it a lot more. It was a lot more tactless. Uh, Hi, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. <laughs> She's back on air after her. Hey, tour. gang. But I think I'm in... Yeah, I think I'm in yesterday's shirt still. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the only way I can look good right now without the gym. It has the pre-cut muscles, so. <laughs> without... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I can't, I can't really do it like I normally <laughs> do. I'm starting to feel flimsy. I'm starting to feel like uh, uh, George Clooney and Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
you know he actually apologized at New York Comic Frank? I think you know this because you you go to New York Comic Con, right? I've been a couple times. Did you know George Clooney apologized at New York Comic Con for Batman and his, mm-hmm. his involvement? I did not know that, no. I heard that. He was, uh, he was Batman and Robin, right? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. I've, seen, I've seen something that's like the 20, 20 beha- behind-the-scenes disasters that took place on the Batman and Robin set. So those are always fun to read. Yeah, because Wayans was supposed to be there, and then that Wayans mm-hmm. wasn't. And they paid him to be in the movie and never actually shot it. So mm-hmm. I remember there was just – oh, it's also like the Superman movie with Nicolas Cage – Wonderful movie to watch about how that just fell apart and mm-hmm. how the Wild Wild West became the Wild Wild West movie that it was and the giant spider. It was amazing. Meredith, what is your favorite comic book movie? Um, I am going to do a throwback because you guys were talking about Superman and it's a throwback to my childhood and I'm going to say Christopher Reeves, Superman. And that's fair. I, I think that's very fair. I, look at Brian. Brian's all smiling right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I just age myself? <laughs> no, we were talking about a lime in the room. <laughs> and remember, I, I say this all the time for these these kids who aren't out there watching these classic movies. You're missing out. I watch black and white films that I didn't grow up on, and I loved Turner. I hate that Turner Movie Classics is no longer Turner Movie Classics. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the History Channel. I think the minute it stopped being about what it was supposed to be, we lost something. So I, I think I, that, that second Superman movie was was a lot better than the first one. I agree. In a lot of ways, it was. Technically, I think it was. A uh, couple of moments, I think, could have been improved on. but uh, But overall, I remember going into the theater – and all we had had up to that point were like bad Marvel TV movies and um, some less than stellar moments during the Batman 66 uh, thing, which since then I've really learned to embrace again. But to go into a theater and finally see a comic book character be treated seriously and top notch production, uh, they got the guys who did the flying effects were like former Disney guys, uh, you know, kings of the industry as far as like uh, uh, rear projection and matte painting and stuff. You know, it, they spent the long dollar just like the Marvel movies did. And they got a guy who sold the role of Superman who didn't even have to get into the suit to convince you of the dual identity. And that was the first time I ever saw Superman actually be a different person from Clark Kent because back in the fifties with the George Reeves adventures of Superman, they pretty much for Clark Kent and Superman. The only difference was the way they dressed. Um, Clark was a bit aggressive and Superman, of course, you know, was, you know, Superman, but uh, Clark, you know, could just pull, you know, Christopher Reeve could just pull back his shoulders and suddenly you're like, oh, you know, you get how that disguised work finally. So that, that, was, that was my take on thing. Again, Christopher Reeve was what held the first four Superman films of that of that era together, I think, because he's just so insanely oh, talented. Agree. He he was able to really have that you know because a lot of the time when i'm watching these uh these comic books turn into movies and things like that and they have that dual uh personality the dual identities and things it's like come on you can't see that that's the guy you know whereas christopher reeve it was just i think it was just how dynamic his acting was also Mm -hmm. you know and maybe uh, maybe i'm just being a, a a girl fan you know fangirl but uh he he was able to, you know, as Clark Kent, he was just this bumbling guy. And it wasn't just a pair of glasses that that made him that character, you know. I mean, he was kind of doofy and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and I suspect that he was kind of that way in real life. So maybe that was, you know, a lot of Christopher Reeve in that. But when he was Superman, you know, he, he, it was just this confident and I'm, you know, not not to the point where he was an egomaniac or anything, but he was just like, I am Superman. I have, I have this strength. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was very distinct for me. <laughs> unlike a lot of these other characters that you see. Yeah. I might be a so, little biased. I mean, everybody hates the Superman three and Superman four. People don't even kind of consider them part of that duo of the Superman one and two. But no, when no. I first watched, when I first watched them and, 
I'm like, first number one, these are these are not great movies. Um, but number two, I saw the bones of a good movie in there. They had little bits and pieces that if you had a real comic fan that was a good writer can take this and turn it into something great. So they, number three, they had a, a great opportunity to use Brainiac as the villain that for some reason they just didn't take advantage of. Number four, they essentially made, what was it? They called him Power Man. He was like a Superman clone. Yeah, yeah. What, what, for the for the life of me, why they didn't turn that into a bizarro movie, I have no idea. That would have been it. Would have been so much better if instead they had him be some evil, perfect version of Superman. If they had him be some twisted, um, disenfranchised version of Superman that you felt sorry for, that would have been a, so much. I saw a lot of. I saw. I saw the good bones there. That they. Mm -hmm. It was. It was a shame that they didn't. They fell apart and they never became uh, as as they had a lot of potential. Yeah, and I think in the fourth film that was supposed to be Bizarro, was, they were talking about doing Bizarro, but at the last minute, or for whatever reason, they did chicken out on that. If you want to see a good Bizarro, watch the uh, Superboy TV series. Uh, yeah. They had a Bizarro on that, and the guy who played him, uh, the writing was dead on, and uh, the acting was really, really quite good. I will yeah, say Bizarro, that. They did a sort of uh, quasi-Bizarro in the, the Supergirl TV show. Uh, I think it, it was a good episode, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, it was, a, it was like a, it was a bootleg bizarro. So yeah. Yeah. I will, it, I will say this though. A lot of us grew up watching that. Like the, my generation X, that was our Superman. And it was amazing. It was what we had at the time. So mm -hmm. I think that you'll find people who are in their, their forties right now, remember it fondly because we didn't have anything that good. I was even saying spawn. I remember when spawn came out, and I was blown away. The only thing I hated was the hell scene. The hell scene looked horrible. And, of course, mm -hmm. you find out later that the, the the actual movie studio cut their funding and made it horrible for them to actually do it, which brings up our next topic. I have to give credit to one movie that we haven't talked about. This Wait. absolutely took a character and threw it on the screen, and it was our character. The stories might not have been anything from the comic books, but we got what we expected, and that was Deadpool. Whether you hate it or love it, you have to admit Deadpool landed on the silver screen as Deadpool. Right away, hit the ground running, made jokes about everything, broke the fourth wall. The only thing I missed about it was not hearing the internal monologue. I would have loved a different voice to have played the internal monologue. And for some reason, I always think uh, Morgan Freeman. I don't know why, but I think it's so cool to have Morgan Friedman saying, this is the moment when we knew shit was about to get real. <laughs> That'd be fun. The funny thing about Deadpool is, um, first off, I loved it. I thought it was great. I've seen it a bunch of times. I think it was it's a phenomenal movie. Um, from an actual movie standpoint, it's a terrible movie. It really is. The story is just so bad. It doesn't make sense. And from a... a um, a uh, story adaptation of Deadpool, as you were saying, even that doesn't make sense. There's what this as a character, Deadpool never has a story because he wants to, because he, he feels this, he feels like his girlfriend was lost and he wants to get her back. That's not really like a Deadpool story. So the fact that they use that as the driving plot was kind of weird, but yeah, Ryan Reynolds, you could, really tell he was he was had a blast with the movie they gave him all the opportunities to kind of really to really shine and it's this weird disconnect between well, they having a re they didn't give I'm him sorry a, they cut his budget in the middle of it they had to make constant changes to the, the script they had originally casted four people to be one character and that's why you got that blender character of the bad guy he wasn't supposed to be just one bad guy he was supposed to be four uh, they kept cutting the budget. You know all the scenes where he doesn't go into a gunfight and he always says he forgot his guns? They couldn't afford to show them actually shooting. So they had to do martial arts. It was like the Indiana Jones moment where that guy's like, wah, 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 he's coming at him, and he just shoots him. That was because Indy had diarrhea. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> I think, I, I mean, I, when I say they let him do what he wants, he, they made a joke about him jerking off with a baby hand. So that was that's yeah, they, they that's let pretty. Go and I think that was because Fox didn't expect anything to come of it. So they're like, eh, 
You know, let him yeah. do what he's gonna do. It's gonna be in the bot. It's gonna be in VHS. You, you know, can I'm- tell right from the opening credit. I love movies when you can tell right from the opening credits that they this is gonna be good. Like I, when I went to see Watchmen, I saw a midnight screening of Watchmen, and when they had that um that uh that opening credits with Bob Dylan song come on, I was like, this is gonna be. He really took pride into into how he was going to make this movie and honor it, and I think it's I'm going to come out of here happy. You know, a really cool fact about Deadpool: I got to watch the movie with Ryan Reynolds himself. He was actually in the movie theater, and this is before anyone knew it was going to be popular. It was a surprise pop up screening of it, and I remember I got two tickets, and I told him, and this is when I first hurt my back, so I limped my ass all the way to go see Deadpool. <laughs> On a cold February night, and Frank knows what the cold February nights in Manhattan can be. The blistering wind biting you. Went all the way there, back hurting. And it was called a, a special preview of Deadpool. Like, it wasn't even supposed to be the movie, and it wound up being the whole movie. Oh, my God. And that's how I learned so much be, about behind the scenes, because I'm sure there are some things he told us he never told anyone else on an interview because no one was able to record in there. So he got to be very candid and very vivid. Like there was no video recording and he was saying some funny things. He's like, I don't get it. The X-Men get a cocaine budget. And we got no cocaine budget. <laughs> you know, I just I think this would have been a better well, film. They, for the second movie, Deadpool two, they really, they bumped it up. You could tell that they, mm-hmm. they added to the budget a lot. And I think that that was where the, the split with the director kind of came from. Or at least that's what I was I was reading online that the um the director wanted to make it a little bit more smaller production, not as not as big, I guess fight scenes and big big sets and uh and they had the opportunity to do that and that was the direction that they wanted to go. So that's why they got a new director. What do you guys think about Deadpool, Meredith and Brian? I actually love Deadpool. Uh the it was just so uh kind of in your face and, you know, like offensive, but you loved him anyway. And, you know, the thing is, I didn't know about the budget cuts and things like that. And, you know, the the difference between the first movie and the second movie. So having said that, I, I think I appreciated the fact that it was a tight budget because it makes you think outside the box. It makes you scrappy. And it's like, okay, well, what can we do with what we've got? And I think that comes... When people do that, when they either fail bigly or they really make a, a, an amazing gem out of it. And I think that was the first. Mo- I didn't enjoy the second movie as much, quite honestly. I, I And maybe it was because, um, I don't know, I, I think I had certain expectations. But, I mean, for me, my motivation for movies isn't to, like, nitpick and, and really do reviews and things like that. I just go for the the effect. It's like, you know, did I feel anything? And speaking to what Frank said earlier, I, um, I think that every story, I don't care if it's a slasher movie or something, there's always that little element of romance or budding love or something, you know, a sexual tension or some there's always that little bit of element and i appreciated that so but that's that's just my opinion that's so funny (laughs) meredith because you only notice how many movies have a romance only if you've just broken up and then you're like why does every movie have a damn romance every movie right (laughs) why why brian what do you think of deadpool um i was thoroughly entertained by both of them um i think the whole franchise should exist just for the uh, after the credits scene with Ryan Reynolds in number two going through his career in Deadpool. And my wife, who does not appreciate gore whatsoever, uh, I got her to sit through that and she was laughing through the whole thing. Yeah, I, I personally, I, I, I'm like, I'm with Meredith is that I kept watching that thing going they didn't. They didn't just do that, did they? Well, they can't. They're, surely that's where they're going. Holy cow! They just went up. I don't believe they went there. Oh my god, they're going there too. Yeah, yeah. And Ryan Reynolds just—you can tell—he just loves that character so much, and he himself has that you know great sense of humor and that charisma that uh, it really came across on the screen. I I really like the Deadpool movies, but I recognize they're not for everyone. So. I will say this, and uh, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. There's nothing more exciting than, than a review of something you haven't actually read or watched and only based it on a cover. So I, that's how a lot of my reviews come in for my books. 
So it's always <laughs> exciting. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to have some fun and we're going to review things we haven't seen and give our best guesses on whether it's going to be good or not. So here we go. Starting off with Wonder Woman, which is, I think, coming out in August now. Not blaming them. They're adjusting. So things are changing a little bit. So the dates might be wrong. But what do you guys think? Wonder Woman, is it going to be good, bad, or e? What do you think? Well, for, or Brian, go ahead. Brian. I think it's going to be e. I think it's going to be, I think I'm going to appreciate the attempt that they're making at making kind of a, a quasi trippy movie. And in the end, it's just not, not going to connect with me. And I'll say that I think it is going to be a hit. Um, despite the fact everybody's going to be craving to go to a theater after uh, what's going on. But uh, I, I can imagine I'm in the middle of writing a sequel right now to one of my books. So I know what the pressure's like to at least be as good as your predecessor. And while not everything is a Superman two or a wrath of Khan, um, you know, that I have a feeling, especially since they have the same director and Gal Gadot on this, um, on this film, I think it's going to be at least as good as the original. Plus we've got a lot of people who probably still remember the, um, the, the 70s TV show. And I think that's going to give them a little bit of cachet on that one. So I, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to do really well. Meredith. Um, okay. I expect hate mail with this one. <laughs> oh, look out. <laughs> Let's zoom in. Okay. So, um, I'm so glad you mentioned Linda Carter because she is my Wonder Woman. She's the one that I grew up with and she will be the only Wonder Woman. For Gal Gadot, even though she's beautiful and everything, I don't think she cuts it. Uh, and on on another side of things, the the trend that I've been seeing with the movies is this ultra feminist kind of movement where you have a five foot nothing 80 pound nothing little girl uh again hate mail i expect it um who's kicking like a 200 you know 50 pound muscle guy you know and i'm just like i don't buy it i think it's bullshit and i don't like that being shoved down my throat um you know for me again uh wonder woman with linda carter i mean she she was a curvy curvy woman you know and you, nobody can tell me if you've watched the watched it you know when she was turning and she had her bracelets going and she's turning and and it changes the scene where she you know she goes into the wonder woman characters like i saw her naked you know i mean you can't tell me that you didn't do that i don't see that happening with Gal Gadot you know it, it's just that there that mystery isn't there that fun the um not the feminist but the feminine I don't I don't feel that and I don't know maybe like I said it's just I feel like a lot of these movies you're trying to get this ultra feminist super strong woman who's going to kick your ass no matter who you are and I I just don't buy it and there's no joy in that for me as as a female and maybe i don't maybe i'm not normal i don't know and like i said i expect the hate mail but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel okay i will <laughs> agree how i feel yeah. i got to agree with one thing about meredith and this might just be me it you i grew up with an idea of how the person's supposed to look when you change that, you you rip me out of that reality right away. And the whole time, and I don't care. I'm gonna I'll take the hate mail for this one. But I'm like, but Wonder Woman's got more um, she personality. Looks like, you know, there's there's, <laughs> there's a lot missing with Wonder Woman right now. There's <laughs> and you know what really bothered me though, outside of that joke, her eye. Yeah. The fact that she had the blue eyes, it played into a lot of stories. A lot of people had written about her eyes over the years, including the creator who deliberately picked that look for her because that was based on a real human being. And it was like they didn't even do right by the. And I really feel like the creator would twist in their grave. And of course, I have other issues with the original idea of what Wonder Woman is supposed to be versus what we're getting now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go there. We'll move on to the next movie. But I'm with Meredith. Yeah. And yeah, Diana it. Unleashed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's been fun, guys. I have to take off. Nice to jump on and talk to you for a little bit. All right. Thanks, Frank, for hanging out with us. Thanks, Frank. Take uh, care. So, um, Black Widow, are, are we going to mourn her movie? 
That was a good segue, huh? That was a good. That was very good, Rob. Um, I'll let Meredith go first on this one. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do another girl. So, yeah, right across um, the minefield. The, now, here, here's the thing: of all of the uh, Avengers movies, I think her story is the one that I look most forward to. But having seen some of the trailers, I think I'm going to be very, very disappointed, <sighs> especially. Um, if I don't get the story about Bucharest, because I could give a shit yeah. about it. I could get yeah. real seriously uh, yeah. in the whole storyline, this whole story arc that we've been following, um, you know, from the first one to to her story, uh, we've been getting these little tidbits about Bucharest, right? Yeah. I've heard nothing about her sister. Like, who the hell is this character? And if you're not, you know, if I don't read the comic books. Uh, I admit, I and I probably don't belong on this panel, but <laughs> um, I don't know where her sister falls in. So when I saw this trailer and I saw, you know, that that there was a lot of mention about this mystery sister that I have no connection to, uh, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm already setting myself up for disappointment, and I don't even know if I want to go see it. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I never liked Black Widow in the comic books. She was always the slut. Who is using her body and her feminine things to get people distracted? And I always viewed her that way growing up. As even as a comic book reader, it was like she's deliberately trying to use her sexuality at every turn, trying to flirt with people. And you saw it. So I never took the character seriously until the MCU. And then I saw the humanity of the character, and I really did fall in love with it. And I do, I do hope there's. I, I'm very hopeful for this one. I actually love her as an actress. I think that she's got great dramatic range, and I really like what MCU is doing. And I like the sister aspect of it because here's two strong females that we're finally getting to see, and then maybe even the mom will be a strong female. So what we might be looking at is the first strong female-driven team in a movie that's a comic book movie with one over-aged, little out of shape uh, Russian Captain America. Which, what do they call him, Brian? You would probably know that. He actually had a, a, a title in the comic books, I know. Um, oh, like the Ru yeah, the Russian Captain America, which... Like uh, Comrade something, right? Uh, Red Guardian. Red Guardian, there Red it is. Red Guardian, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Okay, but I'm hopeful. I, I just want to pop in here real quick, because now, what I was saying about the Wonder Woman, you know, Gal Gadot's mm -hmm. Wonder Woman versus Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. I can't wait for this movie with this idea that I have in my head, my expectations of it, because that's that's been her character. And I think Scarlett Johansson brings so much depth to that, where, where it's not just, you know, like you were saying, Rob, where, you know, she's kind of sleeping around and doing, you know, all of this underhanded spy stuff and, and all that, but, um, you know, and, and assassins and whatever it is that they do. But um, so I'm looking forward to that, that strength and power. And, you know, like, where did she get these skills? You know, where did she get these killer skills? Um, where, again, I feel more connection to that and her strength in, in that way, as opposed to what I'm seeing with this new rendition of Wonder Woman, which I can't, I, I really don't like at all. I'll let you know what the Wonder Woman movies like, Meredith. I'm your friend, but uh, but no, the I'm I'm looking forward to the Black Widow uh, show. You know, because ScarJo, she is a great, she's a terrific actress. Now, the one thing I'm going to have to overcome, uh, and the blonde Black Widow doesn't bother me because there was an element of that in the comics about oh about 20 years ago or so, very limited time. The thing I'm going to have to go into the theater and try to get past is she's dead you know and part of me doesn't want to love the film because it's you know it's real hard to get over that thing about i'm watching a character that has a finite lifespan basically yeah yeah sure you can shoehorn more stuff in before she became an avenger and that's well well and good but um I really want to see that she has set up some sort of trick that, um, you know, there's a little, um, 
you know, she knows how to stop her heart because of her Russian training and she knows how to keep her spine intact. And she uh, slipped through a secret panel in the ca- casket and all the Avengers think she's dead. And she, maybe she'll come back with plastic surgery in about 10 years or so. And uh, as a different actress, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I really dug uh uh, Scarlet's uh, interpretation of the Black Widow. And I, I agree with you, Rob, that in the early days, I remember reading her early appearances. And I'm like, you bitch, you know, you stop leading that nice Hawkeye around you, you nasty lady, you. Right. But she grew into a, a far more rounded character as time went on. But yeah, yeah. I, I have some internal problems, but I recognize I'm the only one who has to deal with them. So I'm okay. <laughs> I, and one of the movies I want to talk about, and this is the probably the black sheep of all comic book movies right now, The New Mutants. So bad that it, it, any chance they get to push, push it back, like let's put it this way, everyone was upset about uh, C, the C-19 thing, uh, except for the people who made that movie, and they were like, oh, delay it, delay it, we don't have to actually show an audience there. <laughs> Just put it out a video, sneak it in. No one wants to see this movie. Are the actors at this point are even like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't put it out, knowing now that Marvel owns this, and knowing <laughs> that this is a throwaway movie. Every one of them know this is not going to help their career. What do you guys? Any excitement whatsoever? And I, I love New Mutants. Understand? I came into comic books during New Mutants, and they became X Force. That's right when I joined comic books so what do you guys think i think it's a train wreck i think making it a horror film was the dumbest thing ever and whoever was it i'm glad they got fired because i know disney didn't keep them well i like the idea of doing a horror film right now one of the few marvel comics i'm reading is the immortal hulk where they have taken the bruce banner character and his cast of characters and they've turned it from a superhero um version of the fugitive into a genuine horror comic and it works it really does um and new mutants may be um you know the chernobyl of cinema but um part of me still wants to see it there was a perfectly good uh generation x film on tv a number of years ago i i liked it i like to see them get to maybe do generation x but uh yeah new mutants i'm just I'm not sure. I think that's one that they should just release it straight to uh, streaming and um, let the uh, let all the crew and actors try to find jobs maybe before then so they can get a hit in before uh, their their career takes a hit on this one. So what do you think, Meredith? Are you going to see New Mutants when you're finally free? Uh, Probably not. But here's here's the thing about like super terrible movies is. um if you if you think that it's bad and you're going for it anyway you might as well let, make it as terrible as possible because you're going to have a fan base of people who just absolutely appreciate that for me when i when i get caught up in a movie i try to watch it from beginning to end and i don't care how bad it is uh and the reason why is maybe it's it's just that it's the reason why we do the rubbernecking when we pass a, a wreck on the side of the road or something you know we just can't help but look at the horror that is there. And um, so, so you know, and, and that, and just trying to convince yourself, like, why am I not changing the channel or why am I not leaving? And just going, it's got to get better. It's got to get better. Really, it's got to get better. It just can't be this bad. <laughs> and, and so you just can't help yourself. And in the long run, maybe when you leave and you go, oh, my God, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. You know, again, I grew up with, uh, you know, in the newspaper business in a way. Um, bad news is sometimes good news because you're going to get you're going to get a lot of people who are talking about how bad it was that you're going to get other people convinced to watch it because they don't believe you how bad it was. And before you know it, you have a fan base of, of this and. I don't know. I, it could it could be a good thing for them. 
It, what would be great is if this turns out to be the next uh, Avengers Endgame and people see it because it is so horrible, but they come in in droves and they drive the pr- ticket uh, revenues up to the point where it passes up Endgame. I think that would be irony to watch, especially watch the people who might be disavowing it in you know in advance. Suddenly, oh yeah, we knew what we were doing all along. It's a parody. No, it wasn't. It was you dropping the ball every time the director yelled action. <laughs> I'm sorry to uh, announce that uh, we think Brian K. Morris has gotten C-19 and is dealing with a heavy <laughs> fever right now. Because <laughs> you have to have a heavy fever to think that movie has any shot now of the end game. We will miss Brian. <laughs> Feels nice knowing me. <laughs> There's no way that ever happened. I mean, not even like if it was the dumbest thing ever funny that you could get high to and laugh at. I mean, look, that would have saved cats. All that bad publicity would have saved cats. And everyone was like, oh, God. Like, I'm seeing it now where it's on actual video. People are watching it at home. And they're like, I won't watch. I won't oh watch my God. it. What did I just see? Like, that's everyone who <laughs> Is that they literally need the the doll that goes? Where did it hurt you? And they're like, ever. <laughs> ever. I, I will not watch that movie. No, nope. I am. I, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to watch that movie. Are you kidding me? That's that's the rubbernecking for me. But I want to yeah, watch same it. Here. Fast forward it. I do not want to watch it where I can't fast forward it. There's a rule about bad movies. Sometimes you need to, be able to watch them with fast forward. Could not watch it live. No, no, no. And I'd probably be live streaming it like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reaction video would be perfect. Yeah. We I, need, I, I we, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need Mystery Science Theater 3000 to come out at this very same time, you just know? Up, just. Yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe like Rocky Horror, where the audience develops a skit they can do and yell at the screen and throw things while the movie's on. I mean, it worked for Rocky Horror. Yeah, but that had some good parts. Well, that's true. <laughs> well, yeah, the the, uh, the music. <laughs> All right, so what do you guys think about Eternals? And I'll be honest with you, yes, I'm a comic book fan. That doesn't mean I know everything about comic books. These were annoying characters that interfered with my X-Men every so often along with the Inhumans. And I didn't care about them. I hope they died. And now they're coming out. It's the same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy, to be honest with you. There were, and the Guardians of the Galaxy, I knew in the comic books, always screwed with the X-Men. Because the X-Men had that, that uh, team up with the... Uh, I, I don't know how to say the word. I want to say Shi'er Empire. I always said I always thought it was she are, but that you know Either way, yeah, that tomato empire, tomato. Yeah, and they always had a problem with Guardians of the Galaxy and had problems with the Eternals and all that. So, you know, when you're Team X-Men, you're like, fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think? Because I mean Angelina Jolie's in it. I mean, like, that's that's warmed me up. There's some good actors in there. Mm-hmm. There comes Meredith. Listen, I don't like Angelina. <laughs> <laughs> I, She's no Gal Gadot, I know, but uh. I, and I actually like her acting. But this is this is one that I had no knowledge of at all. So I'm just going to pass to Brian. I'm just going to okay. give you up I, I like the casting. Oh, personally, I like the casting. I'm astonished by the casting. Actually, it's got some high powered actors in there. Um, and I, this is an old Jack Kirby concept, which doesn't rule out a whole lot in the Marvel universe. But it was one of the last things he created for Marvel back in the 70s. I saw a lot of potential in it back then, like a lot of Kirby properties. So I'm interested to see how they portray it, especially since uh, I know they've had other Eternals series over the years past Kirby and past the short one Neil Gaiman did. But um I'm just interesting see I'm interested to see what kind of tack they take with it. Um I think it has the potential to maybe be the new tent pole of the Marvel Comics universe. Fair, fair. I, I could because they need something right now, right? Yeah, we, without the Avengers really, since almost everybody is gone from that. Now there are A characters and then there are B characters and then there's like C characters, and then there's our next movie, Morbius. One of the characters that just never, no one really cared about. Everyone wanted Blade to kill him. He couldn't decide if he was going to be a good guy or a bad guy. 
But then this trailer hits for Morbius, and I'm like that that me that uh that meme where it's like, take my fucking money, Jesus, that's amazing. Have you guys seen that trailer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meredith, I, you no, I, I would love I would love for you to play that, but no, I'll, I'll have I, to look I, it up. I myself. can't play it, but here's what we'll do: me and Brian will talk about it, and you watch it while we're actually uh, talking about it, and then you can give us a. We can actually watch you watching it. So just just mute yourself, and we can actually get the. <laughs> The live reaction video. Yeah, there we go. We'll just watch Meredith. But um, well, I'll start. I I I've only liked Morbius a couple of times in his entire history. Um, when he had his own his own series back in the seventies, that wasn't half bad. But he's never been one of my A characters by any stretch of the imagination. I agree with you there. But I do want to see the uh film i'm not a huge Jarrett leto fan but there is one person who's in it i am a huge fan of and that's matt smith from doctor who right now what is he i can't make it out what is he i'm not sure i don't know since i haven't followed a lot of marvel comics in the last uh 10 15 years i don't know if he's a minor character from the morbius uh uh uh, cast of characters or if he's someone they just made up for the film but I would watch Matt Smith read a shopping list because he is that good I've seen him do other things other than Doctor Who and he's a really terrific actor so I, I'd watch it for him if he's in there you know what I'd love to see him be a vampire and David Tennant stake him in the heart Oh, that would be classic. That would be so classic. Yeah, Tennant's another guy that uh, he can do no wrong as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I have not seen anything bad with David Tennant, honestly. Yeah. Like, all the things that I will watch now because he's in it and I have a list of them. Yeah. And, um, and they're harder to get because they're part of the Brit and, you know, the BBC. And it's sure, like, yeah, yeah. It's not easy to always get. But there was right. this weird one where the police are talking to people in three different counties at the same time. And oh, is that Broadchurch? No, no, I love that. Did not like. Okay, I haven't watched all of Broadchurch yet. Yeah, I'm missing one season, the final season. I, again, I want to sit down and do it, but yeah, hard to find in America. Yeah, I they hear you. Want to go to England, not really. Yeah, but I do. I would like to go to England to see some of the Doctor Who stuff and all that. Oh yeah. yeah. Are you done, or is she still? No, she's still watching. She doesn't look terribly impressed. No, she doesn't. We we, we oversold this. We I think we did. <laughs> But no, I think the graphics that I saw. I'm the watching with great interest, actually. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, good. Uh, look, uh, yeah, we, no, no, no. I mean, I, I, I think I did see this actually. It just the the name wasn't clicking. But uh, Jared Leto is just <sighs> hello, baby. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. I don't play for that team at all, honestly. But yeah, for him, for him, yes. <laughs> For so him, from, I would. From the, two, from the two minute trailer that I'm watching, I mean, there seems to be like a really good storyline. Mm -hmm. And that's what excites me. I'm going to be super pissed if I actually throw 10 bucks to watch this movie and the trailer was the good parts. No, I think <laughs> this, one, this one looks like it's got some energy. The, yeah, the uh, yeah. I, and it does, it does look like it's got some depth. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Take my money. I, but yeah. I, when I saw the Joker, that was cringe shit. Oh, my God. Him playing the Joker. The only thing that saves it, and I, this is a theory that went around, and, you know, they have NDA, so they're not allowed to talk about it. But the theory I heard was that he wasn't the Joker. He's Jason Todd. And I said this on mm -hmm. Brian's show. He's actually Jason Todd who had been had the crap killed, uh, beat out of him, and Jason Todd killed the original Joker and becomes the new Joker, hence all the weapons and stuff, because that's a way to screw with Batman. That's him trying to pick, and that's why Batman doesn't beat the crap out of him in the movie, and he's having soft, because think about it, he's not really trying, Batman gets on the car, and it's not his usual Batman fist through the thing and dragging him out. He seems like he's trying to kind of corral him, like we see with Jason Todd. If that's true, we missed out, because that mm -hmm. would have been an awesome Red Hood story. Yeah, I agree. Moving on to our next featured film coming out sometime when the doors are open. This one's another one I don't know a lot about. I've seen him in the books, and I'm not impressed. Shang-Chi? Shang oh, yeah. Shang-Chi, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm So far, and nothing against him, I'm just not a kung fu guy. The closest thing I like about kung fu is Wu-Tang Wu Clang. 
And besides <laughs> that, it's like I, I grew up, you know, you had those kung fu movies. You had to watch them because we had four stations, and one of them was playing golf. One of them was playing some, some woman talking about some stuff. Another one was like news, and then there was the the the, the kung fu or Godzilla. Yeah. Love yeah. Godzilla. Don't forget, don't forget the religious channels that always came in crystal clear. Oh yeah, Ooh. of course. But that was when you had to go to the second dial, not the first dial. But the second you, that's where you sometimes could find Doctor Who, though. It's yeah. not the second dial, but it was like, and you're just looking, and it was never really a like like you said the religious channel was fine. But like the BBC, like when they would be showing that, it was like wavy stuff. So your head was like this, trying to like look for the yeah. angle where you could yeah. kind of see it. And later that happened to porn. And same thing, trying to see if I could see it for free. <laughs> what is this porn you speak of, young man? <laughs> oh, you know, it's about dinosaurs. Um, oh, oh, that. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't. I don't have any interest so far. Like, I really think Marvel's going to shit the bed on this one. Because they haven't given us a lot to build into it right now. And I know right now they can't. But even for the last couple months, they haven't done anything to win me over with this story or showing me anything about it. So, And mind you, I didn't like Doctor Strange. I still haven't watched it in entirety. I oh. don't like him. He's a prick. That character has been such a dick to the X-Men for so many years. And even Spider-Man, he's always been kind of rude to everyone. I just don't like him. And I like the actor. And I like him when he's with other people. But this whole mystical realm thing, where's my pillow? You know, like, it's just not. And that's me. Understand, that's just my, my attention span and all. Plus, I don't want to have vertigo when I'm in a theater. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to. I didn't like, like that. Uh, what was his name? Um, the, the, the cute boy everyone loves who just won the Oscar. Help me out. He was in Great Gatsby. He was in Titanic. Oh, What's the kid's name? Come on, you guys, he's famous. Oh, oh, Ron. Uh, DiCaprio? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, DiCaprio, yeah. Yeah, he, he, man, I'm telling you, man, that's just a mess on itself. But that movie was in where they, they did all the things with the director of Batman, where it was like Inception and it was all right. Weird. I couldn't, I couldn't even watch that. It just hurt mm -hmm. my eyes. I don't go, I don't want to see that. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not a big fan of the uh, the ultra CGI is what I call it. You know, like the Transformers and things like that, where you there's just so much eye candy you don't know where to look. And mm -hmm. I think that's, I honestly I think that's terrible direction. You know, the director should have known better and kind of you know when it's a when it's a story. You know, we have that story arc that people can follow. When it's on video or on TV, you know, you have to give us these visual cues on where our eyes need to go, where you want to focus that story. And, you know, with a lot of these things, I'm not seeing that because it's like, oh, we've got this new toy. Let's just throw everything at it. And it it does. It hurts my eyes. And uh, maybe maybe it's because, you know, I, I don't mind being an old lady and admitting that, but... Uh, you know, it's the same thing with video games and things. I can't do the three D games because yeah, I don't like it me off. So, yeah. so with that again, when it's like that ultra CGI, everything is there, and you know, I mean, who knows in the future? Maybe it's going to be like forget the actors; it's just going to be, you know, holograms of them or whatever. Um, I I don't like it. I can't confirm this, but I I, I had a sinking suspicion that this year we weren't going to see a lot of three D. I think they've abandoned once again 3D because it, it takes up more time. The the and if that's if AMC comes back, there are rumors AMC is not even coming back. We might yeah. be having the movie theater experience now, watching it at home on a giant screen where we're watching with our friends from now on. We don't even know what the movie industry is going to look like. To be honest with everyone, we might have seen the end of AMC. And without AMC, how many people are out there for doing movies? You know, yeah. we don't even know if they're in good shape right now. So it is a scary time. So we're talking about these. But speaking of scary, this uh, whenever they recast this one character, the internet goes crazy. And that's Batman. And we saw Ben Affleck. And I said it. I like, I'm one of the rare, rare people who like Daredevil. I actually still to this date like the movie. I did too. Yeah. I did too. So when they cast him for Batman, I'm like, no, he'll do great. He's a fan. That guy is going to nail it. And you, his workouts, he was a drunk alcoholic and still nailed being Bruce Wayne and 
and Batman when he was going through a divorce and all that. I give him nothing but credit. Um, I do think he played Bruce a little too dark. I, again, I do like the idea that Bruce is supposed to be happy. Kevin Conroy showed it very well in the cartoon. And I'll give credit to uh, Val Kilmer. I thought Val Kilmer did an excellent job of playing the two parts. I just don't think his Batman was dark enough. I don't, And I don't think that's his fault. I think they dialed him back. They did. They did. Uh, yeah. Warner Brothers uh, did not like the direction that Tim Burton was taking with the first two films of The Darkness. I read the I, I saw this in the commentary on the box set. And um, so Warner's asked them to dial it back for Kilmer. And they still thought that was too dark. And that's how we got Batman and Robin, which, frankly, we talked about earlier. I'm the only person on Earth that actually my wife and I are the only two people that actually like Batman and Robin. Except, yeah. except for the credit card scene. The credit card scene was just too Adam West for me. But, um, but uh, yeah, and we never did ask, get to the thing about Shang-Chi. I love the original Shang-Chi comics. I'm optimistic. Okay, let's move on to Batman. Yeah, we didn't know enough. So we were just like... Um, I do. I, I do. Not yeah. for me, I guess. He premiered in special Marvel edition number 15 with uh, Jim, uh, let's see, Steve Englehart writing, Jim Starlin, the, co the creator of Thanos, and Al Milgram inking. That only lasts about three issues till Doug Minch took over with Paul Galassi, who actually brought in real kung fu moves, and it became more of a philosophical book at that point. That's the only run I liked of that Shang-Chi, frankly. So if they go back to that, I think that'll be a really fun, real good palate cleanser for the Marvel Comics universe. Okay, back to you. I think there's a great opportunity to bring in the Defenders with that, because Luke, yeah. Cage, mm -hmm. and Iron Fist, they're all from Netflix. We got them back. They're mm -hmm. on our home team. We could do it. We got the, the kid coming in with us. And he, th th here's a comic book fan, and he's gonna love this. So, have you been watching it all? No, no, no. I, I, I haven't. And and I'm sorry, I had to do an interview, and then right. I, and, and now I'm not, I'm told that I, I gotta go run and do some other stuff too. But I wanted to pop in and tell everybody that you're all wrong. Um, you are saying the same thing about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, the, I, 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 I'm sorry, I missed the um, what you were talking. About. I heard you talk about the defenders. Yeah. Which uh was a. I don't think that series gets the credit it deserves. Um, good. I think it's a good series. Um, yeah. I like the fact that it was shorter, eight episodes. That was great. I didn't need 13. I couldn't sit with 13. It was impossible. Those series are too long. 13 episodes of, of, of this dry ass Danny Rand running around. And, and the fact that Danny Rand didn't die in the Defenders is horrible. But I don't know if you guys seen this. Last night, or yesterday, I engaged in uh, a draw stream or personal YouTube. Thank God that uh, Rob didn't share it, uh, where I drink it, absinthe. It. It is did it. you? I did not oh, some oh. of it. Oh, I no. saw the oh, end. No. I saw oh. the good part. <laughs> um, but I woke up in my stupor and I watched Ghost Rider. And I noticed something I've never seen before. Ghost Rider. Donnie, uh, John, Donnie, Johnny Blaze changes into Ghost Rider, gets hit by a truck, right? He pushes the truck off of him, beats everybody's butt, walks off, saves Rebel Wilson, I think, from being robbed. The mugger stabs him. He wakes up the next morning in the graveyard by the caretaker. Caretaker stitches him up because he got stabbed. You got stabbed while you were the Ghost Rider. What, why, are you get, why are you getting stitched up? I don't understand. You got smashed by a truck as well. You should be dead. And then, then they turn around later on, and he gets riddled with bullets. They didn't have to pull any bullets out of his ass. That movie's broken. I broke the movie because I was drunk. Do you know where you went wrong? No. Watched a movie with Nicolas Cage in it. The only good <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie was The Rock, and that was all Sean Connery. That was all Sean Connery. Call it what it was. Face off yeah. with concept. I want to see it with two girls, and there to be a boob job as well. I said you, it. I put it out there. You, 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 you got a point. I, I, I've been calling for the uh, new age reboot of I broke back mountain myself. I think this should be gender swapped. I'm all for that. I want to see that. Um, I want to see. I, I understand it's a fine piece of cinema, beautifully woven cinema, and uh, I think we need to get that done in Hollywood. I think it's time. I think I it's know time. I watched it and I instantly wanted to go camping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I can't you say very well. You got a pretty mouth for a man. Oh, wait, wrong movie. <laughs> wrong generation, Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I seen... Um, I seen Deliverance, and um, I, I was not, not I, I was not, not aware that that part wasn't supposed to be funny. But no, I won't watch that because no, I've gone up to upstate New York, and I don't want to be more afraid of those people <laughs> as they already look at them like they're weird. <laughs> now I live in Florida. No, no. The cop asked me why I was going so fast. It was like because I live in Florida. And we just went through some boondock area, so I'm going real fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barry, tell them where they can follow you, and you're going to be on tonight, right? Yeah, I will. I will. Uh, IndieVolt, IndieVolt.com. Uh, IndieVolt tonight, we're going to be talking about a very, very, we're going to, about, we're going to be talking to a comic shop owner, who uh, what he's doing to stay afloat during these lean times. We're also going to be asking a very, very dirty question. Do we even need publishers anymore? Uh-oh. No. Now without uh -oh. diamond. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, it's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's gonna be. Thanks, uh, very yeah, 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 I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll be hanging out just to see all like the hurt feelings that come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be all kind of stuff in the chat. You know, a um, couple of death threats and everything. But yeah, uh, guys. By the way, best superhero movie ever. A comic movie. To comic a film the or comic the film. People don't expect me to say this, but I'm gonna go roll to perdition. Oh, I've actually heard I, that. Well done, yeah, well done. Yeah. I've heard that. I agree. Oh. I agree. That was excellent. Yep. yep. All right. All right. Hey, see you guys. Thanks for jumping in. Take care. All right. So now with Batman, we have this new Twilight Boy and Robert Patterson, and everyone's saying it's gonna be the sprinkly, glowy thing, but I'll be honest with you. After being humiliated by Kristen Stewart the way he was, I'm sure he's ready to play the Dark Knight. I'm sure all he does is sit around and think about how he could kill and beat people up after that. I'm all for Robert Patterson, and I know Josh is a huge fan of Robert Patterson. And he came in Funny. and talked to us about how Josh Patterson will be the best Batman ever. Hi, Josh, Josh. Patterson, absolutely. Anybody with Josh is going to be 10 times better than anyone. Hello, everyone. I have been trying to listen in during the, the Shang-Chi and the, no, the Jared Leto I'm Prince the only one who knows who Shang-Chi is, man. Do you know who he is? We're still looking. Yeah, I do. I do, actually. Where he, um, he's one actually, of I really enjoy they did a series with Iron Fist where he's having to learn proper martial arts and the understanding of it from Shang-Chi as well. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a really good storyline as well. Mm -hmm. um, give me one quick second. I'm just uh, reconnecting my uh, my headphones here so I can hear things better. So Yay, Brian, technology. what do you think? Twilight Batman going to be good? I, I, I've learned a long time ago that I don't even bother with Batman trailers. Um, it, it's one of those things where it's like they're always going to be super obscure and they'll be like, look at the character design and then they're going to get to the plot and it's just going to be whatever. Um, and that's just my, my personal opinion as far as that's concerned. I would like to hope that it's good if they play with Long Halloween like they've been rumoring, then I am on board. Um, just because I, I like some of the more obscure characters like Calendar Man and stuff when they get uh, almost like a slight reboot and just a little bit of a tweak, like characters around them. Um, for example, there's a there's a character for Joker that um, they did an annual issue and it was called The Joker's Apprentice. And the Joker was just bored and he decided to basically create a, a new villain just for Batman because of this. And he timed it just the right way so he knew Batman would put this guy in prison on the anniversary of when the Joker uh, was first uh, thrown into Arkham by Batman. And so, like, the ending of that whole tale is, like, happy anniversary, Bats. And like, it's like, so when you get those kinds of stories, I'm all on board. Um, and with DiCaprio, when you have, like, Inception or Shutter Island, which I thought was great uh, with the CGI and the graphics. But that's my, my personal opinion on that. So Brian, what do you think? Are we getting are we getting our money's worth with this Patterson guy? Are oh you yeah, yeah. Seriously, didn't mean to step on you, uh, but yeah, we are. Because um, I've seen his film filmography. He does a lot of independent films now, uh, and some of the roles are genuinely dark. Uh, I don't think we're going to get the sparkly Batman. And see, I'm of the generation 
that remembers that they announced a Batman film and everyone said, this is pre-internet. Everybody goes, this guy's going to suck. This guy's going to be the worst thing ever. They've killed the Batman franchise before it starts. His, you know, it was Michael Keaton. I remember that. Like they were really going, he's a comedic actor. How is this ever going to work? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was getting hate mail, death threats, the usual nine yards from, you know, fandom. And, you know, you read the fan press at the time and they think it's like, Oh my God, this is the death knell for all superhero films. And then two years later, they're, they're madder in hell. The same people are mad because Keaton is dropping out of the role. I've learned just from that one incident. Don't prejudge what, you know, the guy will do, uh, be, you know, before he does it on the screen. Look at Hugh Jackman. No one in this country had heard of him. And now, you know, with just one role, well, maybe you, you're the only one. I like Kate and Leopold. Excuse me. I think that's I, never, had, I never saw that. So, uh, I'm, I'm with Josh. I actually yeah, get out of here. Well. Anyway, no, <laughs> so seriously, no, I never saw that. So I wasn't familiar with him. But the thing was, here's a guy who, if you look at the Wolverine in the comics, he does not, you know, I did. I had encountered some people at the time said, "Well, he's like nine inches taller than the real Wolverine." Because we had the official handbook of the Marvel Universe with the. Stats I never realized the there were so many people that were obsessed with height of characters until uh, this debacle with the height of Hugh Jackman came about. I was like, "That's so weird." If you've ever worked in a comic shop like I did at the time, holy crap! Uh, mm. It's it's almost like um, the tin foil hat. Uh, crowd before they became more common uh, in a lot of cases of the discussions I sat through. But yeah, you know, some people nitpick anything about the movies, but the thing is, the guy was just so insanely talented. Who cares how tall the guy is? You know, you can get like an NBA star to play Puck from Alpha Flight, and if he's got the talent, people will be forgetting the height difference there. But uh, what's your name? No, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking I'm John Henry Irons. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? He's got. He, yeah, well, okay, there are exceptions to every rule. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but the thing is, you know, I I've learned from the Keaton thing that uh, we don't know what's on the screen. We didn't know what the screen tests were like. So let's just wait till the film comes out before we start throwing stones at it. Uh, at Thank least with Rob's uh, age old uh, punching bag here. You know, just remember Nicolas Cage got full costume test for Superman. You know. Yep. That's true, but then again, uh, also I was he looking. Superman. Hey, I think he'd have made a great Clark Kent. I don't know about Superman, Rob. Do you have some sort of neuromuscular thing going on there? Uh, you're He's disagreeing with me. This I, isn't me. I really think that the C nineteen has created you to have a fever, <laughs> and you're, you're going out on us with all the things you're saying tonight. And I'm not going to call up Cookie. And be like, Cookie, check his temperature. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to talk about the greatest film ever made for Getz's and Kane. Let's talk about The Spirit. No, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I actually enjoyed The Spirit. It was I, I approached it from comedy, but I also yeah, I had a yeah. major crush on the, uh, the the cop actress at that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Because of the castle and everything else, so like, I dig that. Yeah, the, well, the, the 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 primitive brain in mine is like, oh snap. I'm 100% invested in this movie just because of her. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. if I ignore the sound of Will Eisner whirling about in his grave, it's you know not a bad parody of action films. But other oh, than yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that's the whole the Frank Miller craziness. I mean, with that whole going up with the 3D that Meredith was discussing earlier, mm-hmm. uh, that's one of those things where it's like sometimes it can be good and sometimes it can be bad. They they All had right. a good start for the spirit but the problem with the spirit really is is that they were really trying to pull in that sin city crowd yeah uh, they didn't want to pull what happened with uh alec baldwin in the shadow where suddenly you you have this large fandom of people that are decades and decades of people and people who are just kind of familiar with the character Mm -hmm. because they you know oh eisner is the best have you read an eisner book no i just i he's one of the best you know kirby you know the uh the fake followers Mm-hmm. Um, you can do it right and you can do it wrong, and that's one of those situations where it can go bad very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you can find the ble- the best balance is, is really right. what is going to make yeah. it work. Yeah, uh, so, I, you know, I, I thoroughly agree. Like, I I didn't really care for Sin City one, Sin City two, Dame to Kill for. I kind of like fast forward to it, uh, but at the same time, I'm not watching a Dame to Kill for for the quality of the book, uh, the quality of the, uh, the movie in that case. Right. All right. You know, it's Ava or whatever her name is from Penny Dreadful. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, I, before we head out, I want to hear what you think of the new Batman. Cause this is where we're going to be ending. It's right. 90. Yeah. Minutes. 
We've been here actually geeking out, talking about things for 90 minutes. Sorry, Josh, you came on so late. Oh, you're fine. That's why I, I tuned in and listened for a few minutes beforehand. Well, what do you think? Like, just in case, because I came in at the hour mark. Meredith, can you hear us? Oh, there yeah, we go. Okay, sorry, okay. I, I, I missed the question. Oh, Batman. <laughs> Pretty boy. Robert Patterson. What do you think of the Batman? Oh, the Batman. You know, I watch them all, and uh, I will reserve judgment uh, until I've actually seen it because um, I think I didn't I didn't hate the George Clooney I and I love the Michael Keaton and uh, he's kind of the one that sticks in my head um, you know uh, George Clooney I, I, but they're actors that I uh, really love to watch and I think that they bring something different to each one. And I'm okay with that because I, I'm not the junkie that grew up with the comic books and, and I'm not the one that's looking at like, oh, the height's different or, mm -hmm. you know, the physique and, you know, oh, the, the cowl for the Batman. You know, I just, I don't care about that. I, I actually care about this the story, what they're bringing. Uh, and, and I really, I go to the movies for the entertainment of it. You know, when, when I read, it's a little bit more cerebral for me at the movie theater. It's just entertainment. And then it's shoop, out of my head and I leave either really liking it um, or really hating it, mm. but I couldn't tell you why it was just how mm -hmm. I felt. Right. So, you know, that's, that's just how I approach it unless I'm actually going there to do a review and then I really have to think about it. But, you know, for, for me, I'm looking forward to it and I want to see what he brings and maybe do a comparison to the other Batmans. All right. Cool. It's time to go. And I'm sure everyone has something to do this evening. I know Brian's always busy. I appreciate all you guys coming to hang out with me because all my guests couldn't show up today. And that's just the reality of the situation. I was saying at the beginning of the panel before we get to say everyone goodbye, you have to be ready to be loose on your feet and make these adjustments, even in real life. When you're at a show and someone cancels, go walk that floor and make a new friend and invite them to the panel with you. And that's just mm -hmm. what you do. Luckily, I have some great friends who come and bail me out. So this wasn't an awkward one hour conversation of what Rob thinks about movie by himself. I mean, if you could hear my other voice. Oh, I love the quartering. It's like the best thing ever. <laughs> but without hearing the other voices, it's not as much fun. That's why I think Deadpool needs Morgan Freeman to be his voice. <laughs> All right, Brian K. Morris, tell us where they can find you. All right. I'm Brian K. Morris, risingtide.pub, also Rising Tide Publications page on Facebook. I do a daily, yes, daily, I don't know what's wrong with me, show called Nevermind the Furthermore, kind of like this, except it's just me talking, but you supply the comments and I read them and allow you to promote yourself. Plus tonight at 8 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time on my profile page on Facebook, we have our regular Tuesday show, Clever Title Pending, which, yes, that is the name of the show. Don't send me your uh, your uh, nominations, but thank you for thinking of me, uh, where we talk about uh, the business of creativity and uh, all other things besides that. So please come join me. Join the fun and the conversation. Hey guys, I'm Meredith Lockwood. Nobody really knows how to spell my name because it's so freaking long and uh, it doesn't sound like it's spelled. But you can find me on geekinsiders.com. That is our website. You can also find me uh, on Meredith J99. That's my Facebook page. Um, you know, we do Lady Geek Live Sundays at five. The the last weekend and this coming one, uh, you know, is kind of taken up with uh, Geek Out Virtual Con and we're doing CyberCon. And um, so my schedule is kind of screwed. But hey, follow us wherever you can. <laughs> Peace. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and I'm, of course, the straggler, but you guys can find me at uh, Art of Josh Lyman. Of course, my name is Josh C. Lyman. Um, but you can find me at Art of Josh Lyman on Instagram and Facebook and sometimes on Twitter, mostly Instagram and Facebook. And soon to be the Art of Josh Lyman dot com. Currently work in progress. Um, other than that, you can find me on podcasts with Indie Volt and Envy Advocates with the Indie Devil. <laughs> And I thank everyone for bailing me out today. You guys were super awesome. I appreciate you truly. And I am um, excited to continue this as everyone's doing a little. I can't do the hard thing. Mine comes out looking like a, a weird, deformed thing. So <laughs> I uh, would show you what hearts look like. <laughs> I will crush your heart. We'll do be a whole here. episode with Russian accents. Offend everyone. It'd be good. We'll be here again tomorrow at 4 p.m. Tomorrow's topic is... 
uh, Kickstarter promotion, how to avoid Facebook jail. And actually, Brian K. Morris has signed up for that one, too. You yeah. love being on I can do that. I yeah, can do yeah. that. We're staying I, I had a failed Kickstarter, so I could use the tips. I, you can come on and ask questions if you actually want to. I love to have new people in the room, and you saw this during the uh, the uh, uh, Geek. What was it? Geek. Uh, what was the name of it? I can't what, think of it. Geek Out Virtual Con. Thank you, Geek Out. Uh, so I wanted to say Geek Insider, but that's your site. It was Geek Out Virtual Con. We had someone new in the room, and I kept asking him questions because I find it fascinating to learn from someone in the room because we're so used to talking about it, we forget to talk about the important parts that no one ever talks about because we don't think about them because they're not important to us because we know. Once you know how to do something, it's like knowing when you walk in your house to take that first step and go a little higher, the first time someone comes to your house and you don't tell them, they trip and fall. And that's yeah. what we're going to be doing tomorrow, teaching you how not to trip and fall in case. Right. Thank you all for being here. It's been another production of Indie Advocates Network and the OnCon Experience.